Hello and welcome to today's Malaysian Grand Prix notebook. We've just had the Malaysian Grand Prix, obviously, and Lewis Hamilton has comfortably won the Grand Prix with Nico Rosberg finishing in a, well, not close second, but a little bit of a distant second, middle distance second, you could say. And that is the first Mercedes 1-2 since 1955 in Monza, which is nearly 60 years to 59 years away, which is madness, really. So long, but then Mercedes did, you know, finish the season a long time ago and obviously come back in 2010 so that's why it's such a big gap for those who didn't know but anyway I'm looking at all the teams and seeing their reaction from today's Malaysian Grand Prix Mercedes looked very good today so far and you had that sense that there's still more to come from Mercedes obviously their development race I think Red Bull are probably leading the development race which you have to say so far but you sense that Yes, Mercedes are quick, and they're quicker than Red Bull by at least a couple attempts per lap race distance, you could say, because Rosberg could pull away. Mercedes was, you know, with Hamilton in it, was about half, six tenths of a second quicker than Red Bull, and, you know, a couple attempts quicker than his teammate at certain periods of the race. So Mercedes are still there, and Rosberg was struggling with the rear tyres, so maybe there was more pace than maybe they're about seven, eight tenths quicker, which we expect at the moment from Red Bull over a race distance which was obviously pulling out the laps but they're very quick but you just have a feeling that Red Bull they're getting closer but I think they have a lot of work to do in order to get coached closer because Sebastian Vettel says you know we're catching them but I think they've still got a little bit of a way to go in order to finally say okay we can beat you but I think on Red Bull's day if the circuit's right the characteristics of the car because obviously that car is still good going through the corners which has been Red Bull's strong trait for three to four years now so, tracks like Monaco, you might actually see Red Bull dominating at that Grand Prix. So, moving on to Red Bull, as I said, their recovery seems to be amazing with Vettel finishing in third today. It was a great achievement for him. It was a shame for Daniel Ricciardo, but he will bounce back from it. But the stewards are going to make it even harder for him to bounce back from it now. And I'll get onto that in a second. Obviously, he had that left rear front, left front, sorry, tyre in the pit stop that wasn't fitted properly. And then he had the front wing failure at the end of turn 14 he then got a 10 stop and go penalty 10 second stop and go penalty we haven't seen those in years in formula one and they seem to be back now uh, for after the unsafe release but because his race was effectively over because of all the problems he had the stewards felt a 10 second stop and go penalty meant nothing to the team because his race was over so they've just given him a 10 place grid penalty for Bahrain which seems harsh because he has served the penalty for it but then the stewards felt hey you know, that wasn't really a penalty because your race was ruined, you're a front-running team, you want to be fine for points, there's no point giving you a penalty when you're down in 14th for the last place, two laps down. So they felt that the team wouldn't learn anything from that, therefore he's got the penalty for Bahrain. Moving on to Williams, Williams are stuck out a lot this season, obviously with the speed of the car that they potentially had in testing in Bahrain, but it just hasn't seemed to, you know, come to anything, how, you know... They're not slow, but their pace is not of the front runners of the Red Bulls or Ferraris or Mercedes at which we thought they might be, you know, come pre-season testing. We thought oh, Mercedes might have a challenger, but it just, you know, doesn't seem to be mounting to anything at the moment. On the team orders debate, at the end of the race, I think it was justified Bottas was quicker than Massa. However, it was unlikely Bottas would pass Massa anyway if they were racing normally. Plus... If he did get past, I think he may have caught Jensen Bunn because Bottas had been quicker in the race. So he may have caught Bunn, but I don't think he would have overtaken Bunn in time. So I think, you know, with three laps to go, I think that the the team orders was not justified. So therefore, I can understand why Massa ignored it, kind of, even though Claire Williams said that he didn't ignore it, which obviously he did. So I, I, just, I find it funny when team orders try and stick up their driver, but like, try not to be too like, oh, he did ignore it, but you know, I can't say he ignored it, and so forth. We're moving on to Ferrari. Ferrari said they're only fourth in the pecking order, so it was a good job for Fernando Alonso today, finishing in fourth place. Raikkonen was hard done by, obviously, with his collision with Kevin Magnussen, and that left him completely out of the race. Essentially, you know, he had to make an extra pit stop. He was, you know, he lost 20 seconds and he was fine with Grosjean at the end of the race for 11th place. And obviously, if Raikkonen was in there, he could have been easily behind. Maybe six, maybe find Hulkenberg for that sixth place finish. Moving on to McLaren. McLaren obviously have that solid base car, but they seem to be losing touch with the front runners. Um, but, you know, maybe we can expect some inspiring words from Ron Dennis during the week to try and, you know, boost McLaren to, you know, get forward to find some energy, find some motivation because, you know, Ron Dennis said at the beginning of the season, you know, second is the first of the losers, you know, saying uh, famous Earth and Senna words that were spoken. 
a long time ago in the 1980, I think it was 1988 he said that, or 1990, I think if you go for a gap, yeah. many inspiring words from Merton Senna. Force India, down. Perez obviously cannot start the race, but Nico Hulkenberg yet again at the front of the grid, and teams say they did not want to sign him really for this season, or he was at a disadvantage because of his height, which meant that he will weigh a little bit essentially more than other drivers, and look, he's putting that car yet again at the front of the field, and he was very close to a Ferrari contract, but, you know, I think Force India, he'll be good if he's not in the front-running car next season. You know, but where's he going to go at the moment? You know, it's still early days to say where where, where would Hulkenberg go? Toro Rosso, the standing out performance from Danny Fiat again. Again, another point in scoring position. He looks like he's definitely one for the future. Danny Fiat, he's got that mentality. He's just, he'll stick that car in. He'll believe in it. He'll get stuck in. You know, he's just like a, a proper racer. Like the Hamiltons, like the Alonso's, like the Vettel's. You know, like the Ricardo's, they'll just get stuck in there. And you can see that in Fiat, and I think you can see that in most of race drivers, but at the moment you can see that in Fiat when he tries to go for an overtake or, you know, he goes on a qualifying lap. He's on the edge all the time, which is great to see. Salby yet again in a race of their own, but both cars were tired, for, so it was not very good for them. Caterham finished the race and were fighting with the midfield, you know, once, you know, the midfield made their pit stops, they were there, in and amongst, battling with them, which you haven't seen Caterham, they're too far back normally, so if the midfield make a pit stop, they come out in front of the Caterhams and Marouches, this time, they were not, so it's a good sign of progression from the Caterham, you know, Max Chilton was also just behind Marcus Ericsson, so, he, the Marouches also made, so you can definitely see that the back, Teams, Cater and Marussia, have made some progression. You know, you might not really see it, but that was a telltale sign. You're like, Cater and fighting with a Toro Rosso, a Sauber, what's going on? And obviously, they, the Saubers and that had made their pit stops, but you know, they're normally not there when the Saubers have made their pit stops. So good for them. Marussia, I think Bianchi, in my mind, was harshly punished for, you know, getting a drive-through penalty for his, or it was a five-second stop and go penalty, I think, for his collision with Pastor Maldonado. You know, he did come across John Eric Vern, but, you know, I don't think there was much John Eric Vern could have done, but he got a rear puncher from it. Jules Bianchi, therefore, couldn't stop the car. Like, Kamu Kobayashi couldn't stop the car, and he hit Felipe Massa. Kamu Kobayashi didn't get punished. So, Jules Bianchi got punished for this one. It's, you know, it doesn't really add up, in a way. But I think it was, you know, harshly done by, um, but, you know, Marusha making progress. Obviously, the 13th and 14th from Cade from today, you know, might be telling, and we need quite a few more retirements, six or seven retirements today. So a lot more retirements may be needed for Marusha to try and actually get to the 13th and 14th again in order to maintain their 10th place or get it back in the championship. But that is all that's really left for me to say. I am running out of time, a bit hugely. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, favourite and subscribe to F1 Breakdown. And I will catch you in Bahrain next week for the Bahrain Grand Prix podcast. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.